we're going to get started right now with news you can use. We're going to talk about a few things this morning. Uh, first of all, the Fed and what they're doing with the interest rates. Uh, you guys have probably all kept up with the news. We've talked about this on previous uh, sessions, but November 2nd, which is, I guess, a couple of weeks from now, uh, we're looking at another Fed meeting and another Fed rate increase. The speculation is it could go anywhere from 50 to 100 basis points up. <clears throat> we're currently at three and a quarter percent on the Fed funds rate, which is the interbank lending rate. Uh, so expect that number to go from 375 to four and a quarter. I expect it probably is going to be right around 4% total, which is about a 75 basis points increase. What's that going to mean for the housing market? Well, uh, it's going to mean interest rates, which are now right at 7% or slightly over, are going to be eight uh, in that kind of range. Some of that's already baked into the marketplace. Some of it is uh, still to come. And it's really going to depend on the what they, they call the announcements or the, the minutes from the meeting of the Fed at that point in time. And they're going to talk about uh, what they expect the following meeting, which I believe is, I don't know if it's January is the next one, uh, what they're going to do at that point in time. Right now, interest rates look like they will continue to increase for a while. Uh, last week's um, CPI, Consumer Price Index, was disappointing. Interest, I mean, excuse me, inflation is still high. Uh, that has not been fixed yet. People are... Uh, you know, at that level, at the Fed level, are still kind of panicking <clears throat> and continue to want to pour, uh, I consider it gas or diesel on the fire instead of water. And it's going to cause bigger problems, not as much in this country as it is around the world right now. Some of these economies are on the verge of collapse, in my opinion. Uh, the Japanese yen, the, the British uh, pound, uh, these countries are down 25 to 30 percent versus the dollar, uh, which basically is essentially devalued their economy to you know horrendous levels. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Eventually, it'll hit here. Uh, we're definitely in recession territory, and we're going to talk about that in a second. What we can do <clears throat> in this business to as a workaround, and there's actually a lot of opportunity. Um, but first, I want to talk about some markets uh, here in the U.S. And this is now these are major markets. Remember, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold still hanging on. Um, I, I have recommended and we recommend staying in the smaller markets and potentially even the rural areas versus some of the larger markets in the U.S. <clears throat> but this information is from Market Watch came out early or late last week. And uh, there, there's three segments. <clears throat> excuse me, the most likely markets to decline in price for the next 12 months are the following. So if you want to write this down, Boise, uh, Austin, Texas, and Raleigh, North Carolina, which is a new entry into this thing. Raleigh is a, a frothed up market that people haven't been paying attention to, and it is highly overvalued, not to the level of Boise or Austin or Salt Lake, <clears throat> but it actually eclipsed Salt Lake and Las Vegas in that top three lists of markets likely to drop in price. Now, the least likely, uh, markets least likely, the major markets least likely to drop in price nationally, uh, this is kind of a surprise, actually one of them is on my short list, uh, but these are the least likely to drop in price. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, uh, Indianapolis, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> India has been a favorite of mine for a long time. I've invested there for a number of years. Uh, we're actively buying in that area, or at least looking to buy in that area right now. Columbus is a solid market, low, po low cost, uh, but it's got some good economics. Uh, and Minneapolis, um, I'm not super familiar with, done some deals there over the years, but it's been a while. It's, uh, but it's least likely to decline in price at this point. So those are all really good things. <clears throat> um, now, the demand will be the strongest in the following three markets, and that's where there's going to be a huge number of buyers who can afford to buy these houses, <clears throat> as well as a, an equivalent number of sellers to sell, So, uh, or, or less, um, less than the number of buyers, but there'll be still an over-demand, uh, huge demand, small supply uh, in the following markets, Atlanta, uh, Nashville and Charlotte, North Carolina. So North Carolina is kind of a mixed bag, depending on where you are. 
in the state of North Carolina. It could be good, could be bad. Um, and so uh, those are the three where the demand is going to be the strongest. So if you want to be in a big city, those would be some cities to be looking at because it'll be easy and quick probably to sell properties in those cities. Now, let's, let's jump back and talk about <clears throat> how we can work on the, the Fed, the workarounds, the three workarounds here that, uh, that we would recommend um, that will make interest rates either be able to ameliorate the, the effect of the interest rates or eliminate it from the equation completely. Um, the first thing that, that I would do and I'd recommend when you're out there in the marketplace, uh, if you want to be able to sell at a higher price, you don't want to cut your price, is you can do what's called interest rate buy down for your buyer. So we've talked about this before, but <clears throat> let's say that your buyer would love to buy your house, but they can't afford payments at 7% interest. And you want to buy that down to say 4%. You want them to get a 4% loan. So currently it's around a half a point for, for every, it's one point for every half a point decline. So uh, if you want to drop the interest from seven to four, that's six, three points or six half points, which would be 6% of your sales price. So no, of the, not your sales price of actually the, the loan amount. So <clears throat> if you've got a house uh, that you're selling for 240, and your buyer is going to have to get a $200,000 loan, put up 40 cash. Instead of getting a loan for 7% interest at 200, you can give them a 4% loan by giving them 6% of 200 or paying it directly into escrow. You'll have to work it out with the mortgage company, but six points, which would be $12,000 on $200,000 loan. So you haven't really dropped your, your price by much. You've dropped it a small <clears throat> percentage. Uh, but you're able to get the buyer to buy it. And you know, we, so far we're not seeing that we have to use this, but this is going to be coming up. It's a trick to put in your bag. It's a workaround to, to be looking at, to put into your bag down the road. And so I would definitely look at that. <clears throat> um, and frequently what you can do is you can raise the price. So if you were making a 240000 sale, your borrower wanted a $200,000 loan. You had to give them $12,000 to buy down their rate from seven to four. <clears throat> you could, in theory, raise your price to two fifty two, dollars And so you wouldn't come out of pocket at all. And the reason you could raise your price is because there's prior comps in the last six months when rates were, uh, or, or sales prices were significantly higher than they are starting to fall in most areas of the country. Not all, but most. And so you'll be able to have support from an appraisal standpoint, and you'll be able to make the same amount of money and provide a 4% loan to your buyer, which if you advertise it based on that, will put you as the only person standing out there. You're gonna have the hottest thing since sliced bread in your particular market if you advertise your uh, your home with 4% interest on it. Uh, that's, that's number one. <clears throat> number two is, is what is commonly referred to in the industry as marry the house, date the rate. So marry the house and date the interest rate. <clears throat> and the way that works is you tell people and you encourage people, a lot of times realtors won't have the foresight to think about this, but you would encourage your buyers to think about it like this. You love this house, <clears throat> you can afford this price, but you can't afford the payments or you can't, it's close. Uh, at this point, you don't want to make these higher payments forever. So uh, what's going to happen sometime in prob not, probably not next year, but maybe the year after uh, is interest rates will start dropping. And depending on how, how, how bad the recession is going to be next year and whether we go into stagflation or how this thing works, if, if inflation becomes uh, unbeatable, in other words, the Fed can't, at some point, the Fed can't just keep raising rates to keep inflation down because it's not working. <clears throat> so they'll have to come up with some other tricks. And we'll talk about that probably on Thursday's show, some other things that they may do if, if interest rate becomes untreatable or it, uh, inflation becomes untreatable. <clears throat> but anyway, you get to that point where you can tell the, your buyers, go ahead and buy the house today at the 7% mortgage uh, within a year or two or three it's going to be dropping down. It, well, it always goes up and it always comes down interest. And we're at a historic high 
right now at 7%, 8% would be right at the top of the charts, unless you go back into the early 80s during the Carter administration when there was 21% interest. But historically, in the last 30 years, 8% is at the higher level, 7 and 8% is the higher level. And so you're going to see those numbers uh, eventually drop. So that's the, the theory behind, um, you know, marry the house, date the rate, date the interest rate. And so I would encourage everybody to, to look at uh, that kind of logic when you're selling your houses. Don't worry about it now, that kind of thing. And the third thing to do is basically what we do, and I don't have time to go through it all today, but what those of you who are existing clients of ours already know is called transactional engineering. And it's the way to create a transaction and specifically the financial portion of the transaction without using interest at all. Interest becomes irrelevant because it's not a factor. So <clears throat> say for example, you, you lease option a house and then you turn around and your exit strategy is to lease option it. Uh, we call that rental hacking, uh, but it, in the industry forever, it's been called sandwich leases. If you do something like that, it, it, interest is irrelevant because you're keying everything off the existing payment of the, the home that you got under a lease option. And you can pass that along or you can add to it. Uh, no matter what, it's gonna consi be considered a rent. It's not gonna be considered an interest bearing principal payment. And so interest becomes irrelevant. And, and that's just one of a dozen ways uh, to, to skin that cat. There's, there's hundreds of ways to do this actually, but uh, that's the kind of thing that we can help you with and uh, we can teach you is, is how to make interest totally irrelevant as to the transaction. So, you know, a lot of times if there's a, <clears throat> a fight in the yard, it's, you know, you're always learning how to win that fist fight or, you know, how to get better or become the karate kid or whatever. But, you know, a good strategy is also just run away from the fight and go do something else. And not that you're running from a battle, but you're creating your own situation, your own positive outcome over here. And you do that by taking interest rates completely out of the equation. You can do that with seller financing and things like lease options. So uh, not enough time, like I said today, to kind of go through that. But uh, if you want more information, uh, you know, reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you. All right, that's it for news you can use for today.